with us today as uh, a few of our SAB members have been uh, here all weekend. Uh, we've got uh, Rajesh uh, Sinaprakasam from uh, London and Kasim uh, Butt from uh, San Antonio, so here in Texas. So I'm going to let them give you a very quick uh, introduction and they want to share a little bit about how their journey and how they got involved with the LEO and a little bit uh, of a message to our team as we think about uh, all the great things that people have been tackling together this year. So Rajesh, I'll let you introduce yourself. And, uh, uh, Dave, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me here. And it's great to meet your team who are uh, present in the conference. And I think you guys are doing something amazing. I think you all need to realize that you're disrupting the way of thinking in patient care. And actually it's for the good. And I think it's very timely too. So I feel that, you know, I mean, we met through LinkedIn. We did. As we do, you know, like-minded people. And I think I really enjoy working with you guys. And I think what I see in the short time we've been working together is that there is a definite opportunity in what you guys do with this tech in the way we're going to transform the healthcare, the way it is done, not just in developed world, it's beyond it. So I think I'm really excited. Pleasure to be part of your part of your team. Thanks. And you are, if I'm not mistaken, a in the UK they do it a little bit differently. So you're a transplant and access yeah. surgeon. So so I'm an, I'm a transplant and access surgeon. I lead the access surgery and I do public transplants as well. And uh, I think you know in UK the way the system is dealing with is a government funded system, but still there's a lot of pressure on maintaining equity of care, and the challenges in improving remote care. Sure. And there is a. And with the COVID, it really brought up to the forefront that remote care is going to be the standard of care in the years to come. Nice. I'm an interventional nephrologist. So actually, half my time is dedicated to clinical nephrology, the other half is dedicated to interventional nephrology. So, I get to see uh, a kind of a spectrum of continuum of patient care. So, that's pretty cool. Um, I am directly involved with patient care, the patient, the patient population that you guys at Leo are affecting. So, this is an amazing device. Um, from my perspective, how I got involved with you guys, I do social media, and quite honestly, Leo has been really part of my journey as far as development and understanding and improving patient care, and I love the team here, love what you guys have built, um, and uh, what I think of Leo, the, the patch that you have, the smart patch that you developed, I think it's the perfect device to come, on, come along at the perfect time, and it fits into what, what's happening in the market so well at this, at this point in time, and it goes to, it goes to what you and Samita have built over, over the the 10 years, um, dialysis as a whole and, and innovation in healthcare is going two places, home and um, and it's going to focus on value-based medicine and quality. This is the perfect device to feed, fit that, right? Um, we want the patients to go home, bring those patients home, bring home, and but also improve diagnosis. Di like you talked about today in the thing, like di diagnostics has never been emphasized in our, in our, in our um, healthcare systems. And to improve the diagnosis, having continuous um, monitoring, I think it's going to be crucial. Um, to, and I, one thing, I deal with dialysis access. So I know the, what's funny is all these value-based medicine systems that are coming out, they're not really addressing the cost of access maintenance. And you giving an insight, the device giving an insight to access, um, uh, you know, access health and how well it's doing and development of the stenosis or problems, that's going to actually decrease cost of care. Um, and so that's that's why I think this is the perfect device to come up with perfect, the perfect time. Uh, it was after the kidney X kidney announcement, care. I think, yeah. that Rajesh reached yeah. out. There was an unmet need call yeah, going exactly. on with NHS. Exactly. So he reached out via LinkedIn. You know, create an opportunity for us to get engaged with amazing clinicians um, that are out there. So I think, Rajesh, from, from your role, I think you, you kind of helped run a lot of the vaster access yeah. for almost all of London. So kind of, you, you mentioned kind of the COVID and some of these changes in terms of, we've seen the rise of telehealth. Yeah. Um, I think there's been uh, just another conference this Saturday this week, there was a question of objective versus subjective data. So as you think about um, the problems that you are facing, uh, you kind of mentioned the NHS system being a single payer system, yeah. but with a very um, key focus on equity of care, what do you feel like are maybe the top two biggest problems in dialysis access that you feel like your team is facing at a, at a, from a pan-London uh, approach? So in London, for example, we dialyze about 6,200 patients every day. That's across seven sites. And in my site, we dialyze about 1,200 patients. Now, the biggest problem what we have is access to the access for the patients to get investigations at the right time. They have a problem, they wait, they have to wait. And that is because the system is not built enough with sufficient support to offer them that kind of time they care. That means that affects the outcome of what they need to be done. 
So that is the biggest problem we face in UK, and I pretty much would say that that's across all the clinicians in modern access care face in different parts of the world. The second thing is obviously the cost of care. I agree with you that you know I think although in UK we don't have the pressure because it's a single payer system, there there is a pressure of creating the value based uh, care. So therefore, I think you know we have to reduce the cost, and the way we we'll reduce the cost is by learning, actually relearning what's happening to a fistula. Because at the moment, we, we all the data we have for the last 30 years, including the trial which we did called SONAR trial, it is what I call as a time point based measurements. They come for a scan, you do it. How can that tell me the natural history of a fistula? So how can I do a predicting model just based on that? So therefore, I think those are the two biggest things. And I think you know, this really fits into what we aspire to offer to patients. Yeah. No, uh, I completely agree. Like, I think as uh, as healthcare evolves, what they're going to be focusing on is not a fee for service on a fee for service basis. They're going to be focusing on outcomes based. So, getting better outcomes is the endpoint here, right? And so, you have to rethink your idea of the cost of the device and how you implement it and how you utilize it, right? So, that, I think that's that's going to be key. Um, as far as what I see, um, I think dialysis access is not. There's not enough emphasis on it from the Medicare side, CMS. They're they're always trying to cut reimbursements at CMS um, at the ESRD stage and everything, but even for dialysis access. Um, but you know, you I, I I fortunately got to practice at a well run a well run practice where we had an access center and I was able to get procedures in that day. And so if someone clotted off or had issues, perm cath issues, whatever, I was able to address it that day. Um, but most centers are not that right. Most most uh, most practices are not don't have that logistical support and um, even like um, you know you talk about our rural settings like if you're talking about people that are doing dialysis two or three hours away from a health system um, you know you you're talking about someone's access clotting them probably drop you know going to the hospital two or three day admission to the hospital so that's how you have to re realize the cost in that itself so when CMS cuts reimbursements for access centers closes access and essentially these people actually have higher costs of care because they have to go to yeah, I think in transplant community, mm -hmm. all the results of the individual centers are published out for public. Yeah. Because your performance is measured by case by case. And yearly, it's, I mean, in UK, all the unit systems are out there. This is going to become, the access is going to come on board with that. Mm -hmm. Which means that we can't hide anymore to say, this is what I like to do. I think it's going to be out there with the patients. Yeah. So therefore, we have to have the tools yeah. to enhance the care yeah. and keep it cost effective. Yeah. And you got to, and that's where I get excited about technology because I think that is the only way we can bridge this. Yeah, and it's to, it's to the point where you're taking medicine from intuitive medicine to precision medicine. Exactly. And this kind of device takes it to precision medicine because you can know so much of what's going on, not just about the access, but electrolytes, and potassium, all this other stuff that we're talking about, trying to improve as well too. So. And the fascinating thing is where is the responsibility shared with the patient? Sure. See, at the moment the care is with the clinical teams. Okay, that's a wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you share responsibility with the patient if you don't equip them with the tools what they need? So I think that's where I think you know, you're absolutely right. The precision medicine shared by with the patient. So the care is when we're talking about patient empowerment, right. when they're empowered more, they engage better. Yeah. So therefore there's so many layers of law just by doing.